consider yourself to be dead and to have completed your life up to the present time and live according to nature the remainder that is allowed to you. Faster than a speeding bullet. I ran until my muscles burned and my veins pumped battery acid. More powerful than a locomotive. An idea is like a virus. Resilient. Highly contagious. Able to leap tall buildings in a single bound. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Better Humanology Podcast. My name is Jared Moon, and with me, as always, is T. Sweezy. Oh, what's up? Hey, how's it going, man? Hey, how's it going? I'm 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 doing okay this time. I'm a little bit sick this time, so we'll see how it goes. But I'm here. Hello, Jared. Man, unfortunate sickness. Yeah, I got that stomach virus a little bit ago. That was no fun. It's that time of the year. But. Anyway, welcome to the Better Humanology Podcast, where we're all about becoming better humans, and that's what we're doing tonight. Uh, we're really going to focus in on becoming better. Yeah, not everybody's going to be trying to get better tonight, though. Some people are going to be out and about, causing some mischief and mayhem, or maybe just getting some candies. Oh, because it's Halloween. Yeah, yeah. Your favorite holiday, right? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> um, noted sarcasm. It's actually Talon's <laughs> favorite is oh, it, it used to be. Is it a holiday though? Like, is it? Ooh, that's a that's a good question. I mean, you don't get the day off, right, from work? Yeah, so. you don't get off, you don't get off work, so I don't think that it counts. Um, and I'm not like anti Halloween because um, I'm kind of anti sugar. I'm anti Halloween because I hate dressing up in costumes. Oh yeah, <laughs> but I've seen a couple of your costumes throughout the years. Weren't you like a uh, Fred Flintstone or something one year? Something I love like that. I love how you are like the only person who has the college. Uh, insight to me. <laughs> three, three hole punch, Jared. I remember that one too. That was a good one. That was a good one. Yeah, you were old yeah, Greg once. I was old Greg. You, y'all need to Google old Greg. It's a pretty good video. Yeah, if you've never seen the YouTube video, old Greg, go ahead and do that. And that creature in that video is what Talon was. And oh yeah, it may make you think forever of us for recommending that video, and <laughs> especially Talon for for dressing as that guy. Yeah, yeah, it was a pretty ridiculous year. But never, um, nevertheless, Halloween used to be one of my favorites. Now it's not really one of those. I'm getting a little older. There's not too many parties you can go to at my age anymore that with people are going to be dressing up. Yeah, exactly, with a baby. I mean, maybe in a couple of years here when I'm, I can help her with costumes and stuff. Yeah, then maybe it'll be my favorite again. Yeah, yeah, maybe. I, maybe. I, yeah. <laughs> All right, man. You want to hop into some challenges? Let's do it. I want to hear yours first, if you don't mind. Yeah, okay, cool. Um, So really, first, I want to just backtrack a little bit. I don't want to go into detail because I I wasn't happy with my last week's challenge, honestly. I want to put that out there. Um, And not necessarily just with my performance, but also with the challenge. Because I don't know that, like I said, I even gave the disclaimer while I was pushing out the challenge. Is like, you know, try and remember you know, when you're not living in the moment. And that's so hard to do because it takes living in the moment, I think, to remember that, you know, to even note that you're you're doing something or you're not doing something, right? So I had four times where I was like, oh, crap. And that's just, I think that's such a low number that, uh, you know, I, maybe I shouldn't even reported it. But moving on to this week's challenge. It's kind of like uh, trying to determine <laughs> whether or not the light is off when you close the refrigerator door. Yeah, yeah, you know. How can um, you ever really know? yeah. You're definitely more aware when you're trying to be more aware, I think, is the conclusion. Yes. You're more in the present when you're trying to be, and that's, it does. You know, it does take effort. Yeah, that's a little bit of a duh thing, but um, it's true. Anyway, so for this week, I think it's a banger. It's coming back to good stuff again. So, um, so think about it. It's Halloween. So who would you be for Halloween, um, and who would you be if you could be anyone other than yourself? Um, and then think about that, and then what about for life? And then write down the first person that comes to mind. And it's going to get, it's not going to take you a lot of time, but afterwards, I want you to create a Venn diagram. If you don't know what those are, it's, you know, it's, you've seen them before. It's the two circles overlapping where, you know, one circle is you and make, pretend like the other circle is the other person. And you want to write down qualities that um, describe you in your side of the circle, qualities that describe the other person on their side of the circle, and then qualities that both of you guys have. 
um, in the in the overlapping section. And then after that, I want you to just take a look at it and just just look it over, kind of digest it a little bit. And then I want you to answer two questions from what you've learned by looking over it. And the first one is what's holding you back from having a quality or skill that they have that the other person has. And then two. Does one of your qualities prevent you from accomplishing what the other person has already accomplished? Answer those two um, and then think it over. And that's my challenge for this week. Very interesting challenge. What if I don't want to be anyone else? No, no, no it's, it, other than yourself. Who would you be so it's other like than a, yourself? Like you have to pick type. You have to pick someone because yourself is eliminated. And of course, I mean, the number one goal is for everyone to want to be their self, themselves and to love themselves and to really, you know, have a lot of confidence in who they are. Um, but some, that's not always the case, right? And if, if, if you are someone that has a lot of confidence, maybe like, like you're kind of suggesting like you are maybe right now, Jared, you, it, this kind of forces you to look at some other ways that maybe you could improve even if you're already doing a lot of the good things. Hey, I was just giving you a hard time, really. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, figured. I, I understood the challenge. I think it's good. Um, well, glad you approve. <laughs> 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 yes, the, the uh, stamp of approval there. <laughs> I think it's bad. Uh, but you know what? Everyone else do it. No, well, I'm, I'm glad you just approve. All right, so I'm going to give... It's kind of going to be... Instead of doing like the fitness and mental toughness challenge in one, uh, I'm going to go to uh, kind of a fitness challenge that doesn't seem as much like a fin- fitness challenge and then a mental toughness challenge that seems way more like a fitness challenge. So bear with me for a hey. second. Uh, the fitness challenge, uh, I want people to be aware of how they stand throughout their day. So we've been talking about standing lately right. in some of the challenges, but now I kind of want to get people standing the right way um if if anyone notices you, you know start to take notice because when normally when you stand you probably uh like kick one hip out to the side Ooh, uh, to, like, to like a certain side or maybe uh you know worse than that i think is when people have you know they they, they spread their feet out uh really wide when they're standing in place um yep. you know uh, really you should when you're standing you should have your feet pretty much forward um and that way you can engage all your muscles. You, the, the second you take your feet out really wide, you, you can already feel that you're not as strong or as powerful. Um, and so I'm trying to t- uh, challenge people to have an athletic stance more so throughout the week, but not like a, you know, not like a getting ready to actually do athletic activity, just standing more like an athlete feet forward and able to engage the muscles and don't kick a hip out to one side or the other and just see how much better you feel by doing that. Uh, you might find out like if you have a little lower back issue or this problem or whatever, it really could just be, kind of your posture throughout the day. Uh, so fitness challenges, just do that all week. Uh, be mindful of it and and try and correct it. Get the feet forward and engage the muscles and uh, don't favor one side over the other. And the mental toughness challenge, the reason I'm doing this one is because it's actually programmed for the garage gym athletes this week. Uh, and I want other people to give it a try is a 1600 meter farmer's carry. So oh, yeah. farmer's carry, if you're not familiar, you can... Uh, google it or youtube it or whatever but basically you can carry a kettlebell in each hand or a barbell in each hand or or you can switch like every 30 or 60 seconds uh between hands uh tal and i did this actually we walked like several several miles uh (laughs) switching a kettlebell back and forth between each other uh which was really fun and anyway so i'm having everyone do a full mile of farmer's carry and challenge yourself on the weight i know it's kind of as a fitness thing but it, it becomes way more mental toughness uh, so How yeah. heavy was that kettlebell that we carried, man? That, that was a two-pood kettlebell, so 72 pounds. <laughs> yeah, that was... Yeah. And, yeah, I, I need to calculate the distance, but it was like it was like five miles or something. Yeah, it, was it sounds scary. It's fitting for Halloween. Yeah, it is fitting for Halloween. All right, and so book... Uh, so last week I kind of read... Didn't read directly from the book, more kind of paraphrased from the book um, on the Thursday short episode. So now I'm going to officially recommend the book... Uh, so meditations by Marcus Aurelius, uh, you know, it's not one of those like sit down and power through it. It's not even, I don't even know if this is an audio book. Actually, I, I actually have the physical copy. Um, but wow. he, uh, he has a lot of great little, you know, passages that you could just maybe read a couple and meditate on, get it, get it. Um, <laughs> the book is called meditations. Uh, so it's just really cool stuff. 
uh, I'm becoming uh, more and more a fan of Marcus Aurelius and Stoicism and and all of that stuff. So I I think it's uh it's worth a look. He seemed like a cool guy in Gladiator. So I'm yeah, actually... he he's got some uh, he's got some <laughs> he's got some good ideas in there. So I haven't I haven't gotten through uh, it in its entirety because like I said I just do a little bit here and there. It's almost you wouldn't be able to digest it if you just sat there and and did a power read on it. I'm actually really really interested because when I first heard that. You know, we were you were gonna um, suggest this book. I had no idea it was actually written by Marcus Aurelius. I thought just quotes in it were from him or something like that. Well, so I'm pretty sure the story behind the book is he was just writing this um, to himself. Oh, really? Yeah, like well, his journal or something. Yeah, it's essentially like his own little notebooks. You know, like his journal. Like he would learn something that he kind of thought was a fact or something he wanted to meditate on, and he would jot it down. And um, mm. that's why I think it's so awesome. I wish I kept a notebook like this. Maybe I could start. Um, yeah, it's cool. It's kind of fleshing out his own thoughts, yeah, on, on word. Yeah, and, and paper. It, it's wow. super thin too. So, and actually, what's really cool about this? Um, so, are you an Amazon Prime member? I am. I am too. So they would. I don't know if this is true all the time, but they would only sell it to you if you were an Amazon Prime member. Because hmm. I wasn't logged in uh, to Amazon, and I was like, I want this book. They're like, Nope. I was like, and then I logged in, and they're like, Okay, yep. Uh, and it was like a dollar. Uh, oh wow! Yeah, so, the physical copy was a dollar. Yeah, I mean it's it's not like a super like because it's super thin and it's just uh, really flimsy. But uh, yeah, it was like a, it was a buck. Well, then I like anyone else listening. I have no excuse not to get it. Yeah, go out there and grab it. All right, man. Given did, did we knock them all out? That was book, mental toughness, fitness. We got yours. Good. Nope. Great. All right. So, given that it's Halloween, mm. and that's when this podcast episode is being published, I thought we would start with some scary stuff. Oh man. Okay. What do you got for me? So we'll just I like being scared. You know, I'm like one of those people that I wish I was one of the people in Blair Witch Fought Project. You know. Well, here I'm gonna have you guess <laughs> some of this stuff, and then <laughs> you tell me if it's scary or not scary. Okay. Yay. Okay. So, what fraction of adults struggle with being obese? Um. Uh, like. Mm-hmm. I don't want to say more than half. I'll say 43%. So it's two thirds. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, that's scary. So yeah. it's Americans, right? Yeah, these are American American <laughs> facts here. Um, let's see. I got another Terrifying. one. Terrifying. So like 66% of Americans struggle with obesity. Yeah, or being overweight. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe, maybe fruit um, in your candy bags this year. Let's see. Can I have you guess this one? Medical expenses for obese employees are what percent more than a person with a healthy weight, according to the Centers for Disease Control (CDC)? So, what percent more? Than yeah, so medical expen- medical expenses for someone who's obese. How much percent more than a person uh, uh, healthy? I'm gonna say twice as much, which I think is absurd already. So, forty-two percent more. Oh, wow. So, okay. So I'm not. I'm not quite. I'm. So it's not quite as bad as I thought. Okay, so that's not not so scary. Okay. So you can survive. So so let's do one more. In total, Americans now consume what percent more calories today than they did 40 years ago? Oh, man. Uh, We're a lot bigger people. Um, uh, 35% more. Oh, that was pretty good. 31% more. Oh, hey. Okay. So in total, Americans now consume 31% more calories today than they did 40 years ago. Uh, and according to the United States Department of Agriculture, healthier diets could prevent at least $71 billion per year in medical costs, lost productivity, and lost lives. So why did I bring up any of that stuff? Um, this is terrifying. Because <laughs> it is terrifying, you know, and it's just, it, it, it can be scary. I, you know, it, it's a real, it, it is a real issue um, that I mean, that America has, and it, it's going to be a problem for a while. Um, and I mean, that's, that's part of, part of the reason I'm doing what I'm doing. You know, I want to help as many people as I can, but you know, it's just, it's crazy. It's a crazy world. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I can't believe that 65, 66%, two thirds, whatever for obesity in America, that just baffles me. Yeah. And, and then also though, I mean, the obesity thing, uh, you know, some of those measures are off a little bit. Like I remember at one point in college, I was obese, 
Um, okay. You know, just like your height, weight standard. If if they don't take into account like measurements or, or you know, uh, muscle mass and all this other stuff. But maybe maybe they're using the standard from the old days, like you're talking about. Now we're eating thirty one percent more calories and not taking that into account. Yeah, but how many people <laughs> are just like, how how many how many percentage of Americans do you think is like, no, we just misjudge that because they're just like, you know jacked and like walking around oh like, yeah bigger, that's bigger true than sh- bigger than they yeah. should be you know like <laughs> uh, muscle yeah. weighs more fat it does all right so and i think i have to ask you one more question since this is a halloween episode okay what's the scariest decision you've ever made scariest decision um probably deciding to go ahead and have our child have my daughter I, mean, I didn't. I didn't give birth to her, but um, deciding to bring her into the world. Why was that such a scary decision? Oh man, because you know, I, ooh, this is um, this is gonna get deep. So, um, I was that guy going, you know, military, young military guy. I just, um, you know, if I talk to Joe, I like my solitude at times, and I just didn't think I was gonna find that girl um, that and have the family that I always dreamed of, and so. Um, I think I, I had subscribed to, to the idea that it would never happen so much so that when I did find her, you know, in, in a couple of years past and then, you know, we are on track to start a family. It's just like it was almost like unreal. So it was hard to almost like uh, just take it all in. It was just like it was just too much almost because I hadn't prepared anymore for it. Like I had prepared not to have it basically. And so when I had it, it was just. It was overwhelming, and so, it, um, yeah. And in thinking about having our daughter, and thinking about all the, you know, the things that are required in raising a child, I think um, were just scary because, you know, I I got comfortable um, in that, you know, just that relationship. So I don't know. Yeah, it was uh, it was really scary until we had her, and then now that she's here. It's uh, it's not scary anymore. It's pretty amazing. What about you? What, what's your scariest thing you've, you've had to, to, to decide on? Kids are pretty scary, man. Uh, yeah. Uh, but I would say a uh, scariest decision was probably the decision to leave active duty military. Yeah, okay. Just because I, uh, I had two kids. Uh, still have two kids. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, I had two kids. A uh, wife uh, didn't really know for certain, like, I don't know, I the the military does set you up for like a lot of structure, you know, and the the big ones are like health insurance and as long as you're doing a good job, like guaranteed promotions and, right. and stuff moving forward. So like there's a direct path. I didn't have a direct path when I was getting out. It was just kind of like, what well, you know, I hope I really make something uh, for my family <laughs> when I get out. It wasn't like super planned out. So it was a big leap of faith, but something I knew that I had to do. So that was just terrifying to make that decision. Yeah. I mean- I could have, I could have done that. I think, yeah, with the two kids, I don't know. I think that's uh, it's really impressive that you made that decision, and then you know that it worked out so well. Scary stuff. Very scary yeah. stuff. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, all right, man. Well, we're doing it again because we're kind of backlogged a little bit, and we want to want to get to some of this stuff. Uh, we're doing questions. Oh, I love this time. This is my favorite kind of show. Yeah, I. You know, I enjoy it too. It's it's fun to uh, get some of this stuff answered. So, actually, talking to one of my athletes, and he he asked me this question, um, and I asked him if it was okay to answer uh, to ask it on the podcast. He's cool with it, and uh, you know, because it could could help a lot of people. And I'd love for you to chime in too, because um, it's a question about training, but it goes a little bit deeper than that. So, I'd love to hear your your thoughts on it. Okay. Um, so he pretty much asked the best way to train for kind of just like grinding it out. So, you know, endurance events, ops course races, uh, you know, things that are lasting overnight and, and all this crazy stuff. He, he's not as concerned about, you know, looking a certain way or being the strongest guy or being the fastest guy. He just wants to have the ability uh, to grind it out. Um, and really, uh, we, we talked a little bit more in our conversation. He wanted to know, he's like, if he's in a team environment, it's a little bit easier for him to push forward, but he's like, how do you do, how do you have the conditioning to, you know, mental and physical conditioning to last doing something like that, but by yourself, Hmm. Um, like how do you specifically train for that? So it's kind of asking, how do you meld 
mental toughness training with you know physical conditioning to be able to uh, yeah grind it out for long periods of time whether that's an obstacle race uh, obstacle course race or uh you know it's kind of like preparing for the end of the world type stuff right like yeah you know how do you have that that physical physical conditioning and, and mental toughness uh do you have any thoughts right off the bat on that um well specifically by yourself correct yeah, because he said he pretty he when he's in a team he does really well and he just wanted to know like what the what you should do to kind of train for that stuff to to when you do get alone or maybe you're in it by yourself. Well, um, something I do a lot of times, and I know this sound, this is going to sound really freaking silly right off the top, but this is just the first thing I think of is when I'm when I'm by myself, I don't act like I'm by myself because you know you know how you have like the voice in your head, like you have that voice in your head that's telling you like what you should be doing or you know like keep going or, or to stop, you know, or to like take a break or whatever. I always feel like that, that voice sometimes is, is, and then I don't want to get too weird here, but that's like almost like, uh, like a partner, you know, like, like I I can use, I can lean on them sometimes because usually my, I feel like my little voice is, is the one that's like, you know, more positive. It's like, Hey, you can make it do this. And the real me on the outside is just like, Oh man, I'm tired, you know? And so for me, um, something I do before I do like a big challenge like that, um, is, take a good long look in the mirror and right into my eyes directly. I know it sounds a little silly, but, and then, you know, not talk physically to myself, but talk, you know, internally to myself. Um, and something about just looking into my own eyes and thinking, okay, look, we're going to do this instead of like, you're going to do this, like telling myself, it's like including myself almost. Um, I, I just kind of use that, use that moment. And then that self-talk kind of throughout, doing it to be like okay you know it's a conversation back and forth between the outside me and that little voice and um you know and i just keep the conversation going kind of until it's over i don't let one win or the other one win i just kind of let it mm, kind of take its course i don't know that sounds kind of kind of funny though doesn't it no i mean it makes sense kind of and if if you never really feel alone i think that's a really good trait and quality to have because that i think that essentially means you just have really good uh like self-talk in general uh, yeah. because you don't there's not like someone who's like your self-talk isn't like beating you up like dude you just need to quit this need, it's more like a conversation about like going through it is what it sounds like yeah that's really what it is i mean it's that's probably why i like my me time or solitude or whatever we call it now so much as well it's because it's like you know <laughs> it is like a conversation sometimes um bouncing around different ideas and things and then pushing yourself is, is so much easier i feel like when you know, it's not just you. I mean, it is just you, but it's not just you. If you if you kind of, yeah, if you just kind of buy into it, it's not just you, and then kind of just let that, you know, little voice in your head, you know, talk to you a little bit um, and not in the weird way, <laughs> then, uh, yeah, I do, it, it helps me feel like I'm not alone. That probably is the biggest takeaway is the feeling that I'm not alone um, in and of itself. Okay. Uh, well, let me let me uh, hit the the physical side of it, the the conditioning side, the, the how I think someone should actually train, um, and then I'll I'll talk about mental toughness. Uh, cool. Too. So, training for something like this, uh, some of it's kind of obvious, but one thing I think that um, people training for these events often overlook is strength. Um, like, even if you don't want to be the strongest guy, I mean, I I think that you need to have a barbell on your back you know, a few times a week, or you need to be deadlifting, squatting, pressing, uh, you know, don't neglect that stuff. I know obstacle course races and endurance events, and and he's not talking in endurance events necessarily like, uh, 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 like a marathon or whatever, you know, triathlon. Right. he's talking about these, you know, mental toughness, push yourself type events. Um, and right. Like not, not just not, one not to say those aren't, but, <laughs> Uh, so yeah, I think that strength is often neglected and I'm talking about like trying to get really strong. Uh, it goes a long way, but then obviously you have to throw in, uh, some of those other things like, uh, you know, you doing a lot of weighted carries, uh, like we do, I, I program all the time, the EO3 iron mile. We've done a, the challenge here on the podcast, which is essentially just loading up a barbell and carrying it for a mile, things like that. Oh, yeah. The farmer's carry I gave at the beginning of this, that's, uh, that's a great way to kind of train for this stuff. Uh, you know, all of that stuff is, of uh, is good. Uh, but to be honest, you know, having trained people, a lot of people who I work with now actually do these kind of events and 
almost what I program is, is for that. And I never have people like specifically going to train to jump over walls or anything like that. It all kind of just melds together. Um, and it's, it's training those three different energy systems that you, you know, I won't get into that a lot because you could hop back a few podcasts, uh, when I did a solo cast all about the different energy systems and how to train them. Uh, so if you want to know more about kind of my training philosophy, do that, do weighted carries and, uh, lift a heavy barbell. That's what I'll say for the physical conditioning side of things. Uh, but then mental toughness, you know, um, I'm sure you remember Corey Turner. Uh, yeah. So mm-hmm. yeah, he, uh, he, I asked him, so we were, you know, basically, uh, for the listeners, it was, we were gearing up for, uh, you know, what would, what would you call our, our officer training school, right? Or like we did in the middle of, uh, college. Yeah. You know, like, uh, so field we, training. yeah, field training is what we call it, but just to help other people, um, understand what it is, it's basically like a, an officer's basic training in college, I guess is the easiest way to, to put right. that. And I was always asking him, uh, you know, I've always been the practical guy. So I was always asking him like, yeah, okay, man, like, you know, how, how do I need to fold my shirts? How do I need to do this? Like, how should I prepare? I, <laughs> I would ask him these questions, like, how do I prepare specifically to do well at X, Y, and Z? I'd ask him questions like that, and he might give me an answer, whatever, and then he's like, you know what you should really do? And I thought he was kidding around at first, but he wasn't, He because he'd always be, like, super serious and have, like, here's why I'm saying that, but he'd be like, you need to, uh, like, set an alarm for, like, like 3 a.m., and then, like, wake up and, like, do a workout and then, like, go back to sleep or something, or you know, and like all this crazy stuff. And he said, because, <laughs> and while he, you're there, no, no, no. But like to, he's like, if you really want to like prepare before you get there, like do these things in preparation before you get there. Oh, I see. I see. Yeah. And, uh, what he was saying was the hardest thing for him is not like learning how to fold a shirt or hang a towel. You know, all that stuff is easy because they want it to be super standardized or whatever. After you get the hang of it, it is pretty easy. Um, uh, but what his point was is like, try to prepare as much as you can for the things that you can't control like you know Mm. like like your your life right now you probably wake up at the same time or close to the same time you go to sleep at the same time but when you get into these events and you're pushing yourself for 13 14 hours some of these are like two or three days long uh specifically right uh, when you take all of your creature comforts out of the equation things get a lot more challenging you also learn more a lot more about yourself so if you want to wake up at yeah like 2 a.m and do an ice bath or (laughs) wake up at 2 a.m and then like go for a run (laughs) Uh, those things, they sound crazy, but if you're training for this kind of stuff specifically and you want to get good at it, I would recommend doing as much, I wouldn't say all the time because I think sleep is super important, but throwing that stuff into your training schedule uh, just to see how your body reacts when things aren't perfect. Uh, so as much of that training as possible. And then something we talk about all the time, meeting yourself. I think that everyone should do that at least once a week, uh, really pushing yourself so hard physically that you there you get to that self-talk that wants to quit find out where that is and and uh try and talk back it's good stuff i mean meeting yourself is the number one thing i think it takes to get better so yeah i agree and and always right yeah always it's really it's pretty simple all right so i lumped this question with um this one because it i feel like it's they're similar and i don't know if if they're we will. So let me read the questions. Uh, okay. You guys tend to have differing views on different topics, but what about mental toughness? Do you guys have any differing views on mental toughness, what it takes to be mentally tough uh, or to build mental toughness? Hmm. Well, do we think we seem that different? Do we seem that different? Yeah. Do we seem that different on mental toughness? Um, well, I we think, just talked. Talk- you know, I Go think ahead. that we, I, I just think that, you know, we are, I think that we kind of, uh, together we're a little more like, uh, complete as uh, <laughs> yin, yin and yang or whatever, you know, it's like my extremism kind of is offset by your not extreme. I don't know what to call it. Like the <laughs> not extreme, like, 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 like chill out, Jared, everything's going to be okay. <laughs> like, I don't know what to call that. You're, uh, I don't know, go with the flow. You're a little more go with the flow than I am. You know what I'm saying? So okay. I, I think that we, we offset each other perfectly. But in mental toughness, I don't know if we do have differing opinions. Uh, Calmness, maybe we'll say. Yeah, like I was trying to think of a good word, but extremism is not a, like, I don't think that's a good word for me either. Like, I think sure. That, okay. That, Fair that, enough. That's Fair an enough. offensive word. Um, <laughs> we're okay. not, not putting ourselves in boxes here. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> go ahead. I guess you tell me what you think it takes to build mental toughness in your views, and I'll see if I have a differing opinion. 
Uh, well, I mean, we kind of mentioned it just a second ago. To build mental toughness, I, I do think it takes meeting yourself, and that that takes doing things that are are going to push you to be able to accomplish. Um, and I know this is kind of something that we've we've touched, we probably touch on on the show probably every episode in some aspect, um, but it, it really comes down to to, to like. Maybe maybe even the unexpected things sometimes because when you, even when you go to do something, um, if it's really going to push you, it's going to be unexpected how difficult it is, right? Like, um, like maybe you know, like when we did the bike race, um, you know, I, we both probably knew that was going to be really tough. Like I knew it was the it was the furthest you know bike race, one single day bike race or something like that anywhere, and I was just like, man, this is going to be really really tough. But you don't really know how tough something is going to be until you get there. So I think sometimes I can plan for something that's going to be really tough. And then it's really not that tough. I don't end up meeting myself and you know, forcing, you know, that that situation to where I have to meet myself. And so, you know, I don't probably really get better in that situation. And so it's it's not always going to be um, a guaranteed thing just because just because you you ran a, a marathon, you're not doesn't mean you're becoming better if you're a marathon runner already. Right. It, it takes um, doing things that are going to shock the system. Um, mentally, physically, emotionally, whatever it is, um, and and I think we try and push those things out on here often. And I think it's it's really taking on that mentality that okay, like I'm gonna I'm gonna go into life really like this. I'm gonna go maybe maybe just break it down to every day. So I'm gonna go into this day, this single day, um, and try and find things that are going to be difficult for me to do. That's gonna push me outside of my limits. It's gonna force me to think of a new idea to come up with something. And stretch my brain. It's going to force me to use a muscle I haven't used in a while, or use a muscle that's already sore, or you know whatever it is. Or really, you know, meet myself emotionally. I feel like sometimes can be just the most powerful way to meet yourself. Sometimes because so often, especially in, in here in the West in America, we try to we try to suppress our emotions. Often, I know we talked about that a couple of weeks back. But um, when sometimes when you're able just to just even meet yourself in that realm, um, you get, you get better. So I think. Overall, it just comes down to that that singular mindset that okay, I'm gonna take you know this this journey. I'm gonna make life into a journey where I'm gonna go and try um, to be adventurous and uh, accomplish and you know and fail sometimes at doing really hard things that are gonna make me improve. You know, I think that yeah, we don't really necessarily have a differing opinion, but I think maybe and hearing hearing you kind of answer that question. The difference maybe could per- be perceived that I'm all about uh, mental toughness through phys- physicality, and maybe you lean a little more towards it's also very much about you know emotional intelligence and, mm, okay. and all that other stuff. I just a guess here, but uh, <laughs> I, I would say that uh, Tal and I are probably more the same than we are different in in that regard than most people would uh, would guess. Um, but mental toughness, uh, you. I, I want to ask you a question. Yeah. Uh, when when I heard you answer the question, so what's the hardest thing physically you've ever done? Hardest thing physically. Um, number one and number two, because I think I already know what your number one is going to be. <laughs> um. Uh, you know, hardest thing physically. Um. I I'd, I'd probably say the marathon was the hardest thing physically. The untrained marathon with the combat boots and the uniform and all that stuff, um, and then number two, um, uh, yeah, I mean, I guess I'd probably say the bike race. Both of those things, both of those things were really like they were difficult, but at the same time, they were difficult for long, long stretches of time. You know, and and I I pride myself on being at least I used to be I think a pretty decent endurance athlete, and as I've gotten older, I have I'm definitely not as good um, in that realm, um, and so doing the bike race was probably you know probably not as difficult as doing the the marathon, but man, I was much older and much you know worse shape, so I'd probably say those two. Okay, and. Uh... You know, I I love the point that you made that, like, if you're a marathon runner and you go run a marathon, that's not necessarily like, like you might you might push yourself mentally, but that's going to be a decision. So, like, if you're actually doing a marathon race and you are a marathoner, mm-hmm. then 
yeah, maybe right there at the end and you're really pushing it as hard as you can, you meet yourself for a small time period. That's you know? a good point. Yeah. Uh, you know, and that's only if you want to, if you're, if you're just like, right. you know, like, uh, you know what, I'm just going to finish this marathon and your body's physically trained for it. Then you don't meet yourself at all. It wasn't hard mentally. Uh, so, because people ask me sometimes, but they think it's unusual that I'm like, uh, let's sum it up as a barbell athlete. You know, I, I, I really don't have to leave my backyard for fitness if I really don't want to, or my garage, <laughs> like I lift weights, I do metabolic conditioning. Uh, you know, I row, I do like, you know, CrossFit style Metcons and stuff. But, uh, so, and so then I want to like go do when I want to push myself or whatever. That's why I get completely upside down and outside of my comfort zone with doing a bike race when I like <laughs> could, you know, count the total miles I had rode on a bike when we did that, like on one hand, uh, yeah, you know, and, uh, true. you know, for that year or whatever. And, uh, so that's why I think that they, because they get, you, you get there so much faster you know, and, and it's going to be there for a long time period. Right. When uh, it's something you don't, you don't, you normally do, you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. With something right. you don't normally do, you're going to meet yourself very fast and then you're going to, let's call that other person the other person <laughs> you're going to be with that other person for several hours now and they're going to be talking to you and telling you to quit and, and not do this or whatever and it, it, it can take a while but uh, it's just easier to to find that so i think that we're just in complete agreement really on, yeah on mental toughness yeah i mean it's pretty simple i mean i, re- I really think it comes down to those basic things i mean it's not it's not you know rocket science to to be mentally tough it's just kind of putting yourself in those situations and getting there deciding to be right 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 making the decision because you control the power to oh, change your own life and only still- you can prevent <laughs> forest fires <laughs> all right man what else we got you got any more questions um, here well we have two more um i this one i'll just throw in there because it's kind of funny and i well shouldn't have said that but we'll see uh basically wants to know our opinion on those five finger running shoes Oh, dude! I always see those, man. I, I, uh, I feel like I was the trend lo- is dying out a little bit. I, I don't think know. they look silly still. I mean, I, oh <laughs> yeah, you think so? I yeah. feel like, I, well, you don't go. You're a garage gym athlete. See, that's the difference. I, I'm a, I'm a go to the, you know, go to the, the gym athlete. Go to the gym athlete. You're, so. you're a globo gym athlete. <laughs> but I, I don't know. I don't know if they're dying out. I, I see like tons of people with those things on still. That's true. I, I really, I'm not connected with what the fitness world, so to speak, is do, <laughs> is doing out there. Uh, very much the nonconformist, if you will. Uh, so, so you're seeing a lot of vibrant five fingers out there in the real world. Uh, yeah, I have. So I'm not surprised we get a question like this. Um, and you know, but I, I, I don't know much about them either. So I always look at them. I'm like, oh my gosh, like they're not making a fashion statement. That's for sure. Well, here's what I know. Okay. Uh, so you say vibram, right? I say vibram. What did I say? No, yeah, we both say vibram. I just, I think some people say vibram, and I, oh. I thought it was vibram. You know, I might have heard it from you. So, <laughs> okay, so <laughs> it's it's my fault if we say it incorrectly. Um, but that they got sued. They got like massively sued, like oh, a, wow. a, a year, or two years ago, or something like that. I, I uh, because not all of their claims could be linked back to truth, essentially. Oh, um, about this all is this, good. About all this stuff, and so you know, I think it was more. I don't think that they were necessarily in the wrong. I don't. I don't think. I think that a lot of other companies are getting away with a lot worse. Um, but I think that they just made too strong of a claim uh, on, like, you know, being able to increase your performance and be better for you. Because I can't tell you when those things first came out. I can't tell you how many people just like effed up their their feet, their shin shins, and everything. Got like, uh, you know, all these like uh, bone fractures and whatnot oh my gosh really like a really like say like a really heavy individual who maybe doesn't run that much and these vibram five fingers inspire them to run and so now they're (laughs) running with poor form like with a heel strike and like a locked out leg and they're because you have to run differently if you're going to run barefoot like you just have to it has to be a four foot to midfoot strike um you don't want your legs to get really far in front of you because that's how you get injured um and just a little tip for anyone out there who, like maybe you're doing an obstacle race or whatever, the shorter your steps and the more on top of your steps you can be, meaning you don't get your legs really far out in front of you, that lessens your chance of injury because there's not this fulcrum or lever out there that like has a place to break if it's all underneath you. Oh, okay. um, 
so anyway, I think I think that they're great. Uh, I used them for a while um, when they did first come out, and the biggest thing that I got from them was I learned how to run properly, or how I feel like you should run, and that's you know more of a four foot strike, uh, a little more upright stands and whatnot. And so I think that they're good. I, I think there's a lot of benefit to them. Um, I don't wear them anymore because I think I, I'm very comfortable with my running stance and form, but I think that they can help you learn that. But uh, it's almost like anything, you know, it's a, uh, if you get a barbell in your garage, you know, okay, Talon has a barbell in his garage. Is, is it a good thing or is it a bad thing? I was like, well, what's he doing with it? You know, <laughs> that, that, that's the exact same answer I give with these, these shoes. They're not inherently good and they're not inherently bad. It's how you're using them. Okay. Well, I don't really have an opinion because I don't really know much about I've never owned a pair or anything like that. So, I mean, it sounds, that sounds uh, good to me. All I know is that they, they look funny. They do look funny. Yeah. My brother and I both had a pair at the same time, and he, he's like, when you walk into a public restroom with these on, does it ever feel kind of gross? Because it, <laughs> it does feel like you're barefoot, and uh, I'll never never forget that for some reason. That's a pretty good, pretty good point. All right, man, we got one more. Okay. All right, so... Love the pot, love the podcast, and always trying to get better. But what do you do when others around you don't want to seem to get better or just seem overall complacent? Mm. You go first in this one. This is gonna be like a discussion. I don't know if I could just go <laughs> first with what you do with complacent people. Because um, the short answer, okay, I will go first, and I'll get yeah. on a little. What do you call it? Soapbox, right? Oh, good. I love Jared's soapboxes. Okay, so. I hang around a lot of people who are trying to get better. Um, or I, let's say I, I communicate with a lot of people who are trying to get better. Uh, other entrepreneurs who are trying to build their businesses bigger. Uh, other you know, fitness gurus who are trying to get fitter. Uh, those are the people I normally want to associate with. But there's also this um, a trend within people who are trying to get better that I hate. And it's this uh, abandonment of those who are not trying to get better, essentially. And it mm. it really frustrates me because that's not how I feel at all. Um, I yeah I yeah I'm definitely not going to say any names or name any names <laughs> or anything like that. But uh, there I are like other the other people in the industry that I know very well, and that other people listening to this podcast probably know uh, that like if you're not if you don't have something of value, basically if you're not better than them at something, uh, not better than them, just maybe at something. If they don't feel that way, then they don't really want to associate with you because it's almost like they they can't learn from you. They can't. They don't feel like they can learn from you. They feel like they're technically better than you. They they would never say that, but that's what that means. If you're like, I'm not going to hang out with you because I can't learn anything from you because I'm better than you. You know, like that's horrible. Um, to me, that's horrible. Uh, so all I'm trying to say there is it, it kind of can go uh, one of two ways, and I don't think that if you are on this better human path. And the, re- the people around you are complacent. I don't think that your knee-jerk reaction should be, well, then get the hell out of my life. You know, and and not everyone would take that route. That's not even necessarily what his question is. Uh, but I never want that to be the answer. And I know some people who are making that the answer, and I hate it. Uh, so that's my, that's my little soapbox is you can always try to help someone make be better. Just never give up. You know, never give up on, on doing that. But how do you actually do that now that I have had that long rant um it's gonna be basically the question comes down to how do you inspire other people right and i'm gonna throw it back to you <laughs> so well of qu- real quickly i want to comment on kind of how what you made me think of when 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 you're on your soapbox a second ago um is holy crap people really telling other people like basically cut others out of your life if they're not gonna if they don't offer something that you can you know, improve on because of the, what they have. Maybe some, that yeah, they're see, not gonna. And they don't necessarily say that, like they, because they're all good people. They they won't come right out and say like. I, I mean, I I highly agree that you should have good influence. Like if if there's an actual negative influence in your life, yeah, like maybe, maybe get that out of your life. I and not even maybe if there's like a straight up negative thing in your life, get it out of there. Um, but when it comes to people, you know, it's a little more challenging like that. Like, what if you have a family member who you're not just going to, like, say peace out to a family member for the rest of your life because they got a little complacent. You know, you're, it's right. your job. So, yeah, it's it's definitely there. They wouldn't necessarily say that, but that's very much how it, um, 
That's very much what it is. Yeah. It almost it, it almost makes me like wish I threw in another circle in that Venn diagram for my challenge this week because I, I totally agree with you. Um, being a counselor, former counselor guy, um, I feel like uh, there's something to be learned from everyone, no matter age, no matter what you know, education level, no matter no matter what. I feel like there's something to be learned um, from them. Even if it's something to be learned not to do, um, people are, are you know, meeting new people or having other people around you that are different than you or whatever benefits you no matter what. So I almost kind of wish I threw in the other circle to say, like, I think somebody you would really not want to be um, and force you to think about a little bit more. But, um, but no, I, th- I think when it comes down to inspiring others, um, my number one thing is I feel like you have to align someone's feelings and 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 um, like kind of how they um, just kind of how they operate with the goals or the you know dreams desires of the whatever you know group or organization you know they're part of. So you can say that you can say like you know if you're trying to inspire someone as a team, part of a team to be able to accomplish something. Um, it, it can be like aligning, you know, hey, um, what what we're going to do to accomplish this goal really fits with what you want in, you know, your life or really fits with maybe you're someone that's really looking for um, acknowledgement, you know, recognition for your work, you know, and the goal is to accomplish this blah, blah, whatever award that, you know, this group can achieve. Maybe something small like it's a it's a intramural, you know, you know, flag football team and the 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 goal is to accomplish, you know, the, the trophy. And so uh, this person really likes accomplishment. It's, it's helping to align them, you know, hey, you, we can really have some accomplishment. You know, maybe if, if you get out there with me and we're going to run some routes and throw the ball a little bit, you're going to be a little bit, you know, better <laughs> at this and it inspires them maybe to want to get out and maybe do other things because they're working to accomplish that goal. That's kind of one direction. Uh, if you're part of a team, it's kind of aligning those two. I, I just I just think putting the person before the process is kind of how I do it. But I think there's a way um, as well to do it on the individual level because not everybody is looking to accomplish things as a team. Really, a lot of people in counseling especially this comes up because um, you're dealing with people one-on-one oftentimes and, and they have goals and they have dreams that they want to achieve and reach. Um, but a lot of times they're they're holding themselves back. Um, and that's so a lot of times my job was to try and help inspire them to reach those things. And so it's the same kind of mindset. It's the same. It's the same really process. There, it's helping to align, you know, how they currently are, like their emotional state, like how they're feeling, um, what they really want, with that ultimate, you know, dream, desire, goal. And so, if like, um, if their goal is to, um, I don't know, find a, a a spouse, maybe we'll say, kind of like how I was, right? I didn't think it would ever happen. That's that's a pretty common one. A lot of people come in, don't think they'll ever find the love of their life. Well, I mean, if you um, show them that, well, achi- achieving that goal is is meeting someone. Um, well, you know, there are things in here that you really, you know, hold a lot of value in. Say maybe um, holding a lot of value in in your physical fitness and in in reading. Those are things that you really enjoy. Things that really make you feel um, complete and fulfilled. Well, then maybe I, I would throw out some things like. Um, you know, these are kind of people that you want to try and find a, as well, have, have similar interests, you know, um, maybe I would throw out, I, w- I would do research on my own and, and get back to them and show them, um, you know, different like uh, running clubs around, you know, or book clubs around there or different things like that and just kind of help inspire them um, that way. Or maybe tell them a story about how people uh, had met this way. So kind of just aligning how what they really want with things that, you know, they love, kind of how they are emotionally tied at that time um, and how they're feeling. So it's kind of, it might, it might sound a little bit convoluted, but um, it's just like yeah, putting basically, you know, a, a direct line from what people like, want, love to what what the end goal is and showing them the line. No, I, I, I could add another challenge there is, um, and I could, you know, see, it could be offensive to try and want someone else to get better if they don't feel that they not that they might not feel that they need to get better, but maybe they're unaware of it or whatever. But how do you bring that up to somebody? If you're like, basically, you have a friend or family member who's like, "Hey, you're not trying hard enough." Like that's how you feel about them. Mm. Like how like how would you bring that up to someone? 
um, and not, you know, offend them. And I guess that's a good point. Yeah, I'm answering more inspiration instead of complacency, a part of the question. Well, hmm. I know I, I think that they kind of go hand hand in hand because, uh, you know, when we had Kevin on the podcast uh, last week. Yeah, shout out Kevin. Thanks a lot, man. Yeah, the, uh, he he asked this question uh, like right after we stopped recording. I wish that we would have left it on because um, he kind of had a similar similar set of question. Is like a lot of people want to know more about like. Um, you know, motivation, how do you stay motivated? How do you motivate other people to, to get stuff done and, and whatnot? Because he obviously gets a lot of questions uh, regarding weight loss and, and what he's done and stuff. Um, and, you know, I, I answered that question at that time to him, uh, but not recorded on the podcast. And I was essentially saying, you know, I, I had always approached it of like, you know, the super practical, like, oh, here's steps one through seven. Uh, to become, you know, more motivated. Now go get it done. And that doesn't, that'll work for like some people. <laughs> and uh, it won't work for a lot of people. And so I think they're really, the, the first thing you need to try is to to be that light. Like you're saying, like be, uh, you know, find the way to inspire them. and But also inspire just by, by being yourself if you are someone who's trying to get better. Um, but that doesn't, that also doesn't always work. Um, because we talked about it a long time ago and, uh, different leadership styles that one of the faulted leadership styles that people aren't aware of is the the pace setter and that is the um you know if, if i just keep trying my best and you know doing this doing x y and z other people will follow me because they think it's awesome when that's normally not the case the, your subordinates or whoever around you your family your friends are like they'll just kind of they'll almost just write you off as like yeah he can do that but you know, like they, <laughs> yeah. they, they no longer, they no longer think that they are, are even capable because you're, you're trying too hard. Um, so if that doesn't work and you can, you have a relationship good enough to where you could talk to someone, I would go as small as possible with one thing to work on. And this is what I do with granted. These people want me to tell them, you know, what they need to do to get better. Uh, Cause I do a, a lot of like a uh, nutritional, uh, coaching and stuff right and some people come in with like very different situations some people are pretty much uh they have near perfect diets they just need like a performance tweak and then i have some people come in who are pretty far off the mark and you know i really need to help them get back in the right direction when i'm dealing with a person like that we're working on one thing mm-hmm. and it, it's going to be a different one thing for everybody but it's like look all i need that i need you to do this week is just track your macros like, I don't care what you eat, actually. Like, but I need you to track everything where I can see it. And their diet might be horrible or whatever, but now we're getting in the habit of doing something. And it's one thing that I had them add to their life, and we go slow. You know, so I, I think that that's, that's probably how I'd approach a person who's complacent. But having that first conversation uh, <laughs> would be the hardest part. And that's I kind of want to toss that back to you because, to be honest, you're a little bit more um, uh, elegant. In, in, in dealing with that kind of stuff than I would be. I appreciate that. Uh, so you you probably have a better solution to like you know bringing up the problem to someone, I guess. Yeah, um, I think it's a tough place to be. I th- you make a great point. Like you have to take baby steps, even with you know some of your clients or people that you deal with, because um, cause people will get defensive. Um, I don't even I don't know about your clients, but I know it, just in these type of situations, I I am someone that loves real talk. Like I love you know I want to tell them like it is. Uh, how how it is, like it, whatever it is, you know, I, I want to be able to say things straight. Um, but I do, you know, it, it's important that I don't hurt people's feelings in the process. Um, and that's difficult to do. So, um, you know, <laughs> I think starting small is, is a great idea. I'm, I'm, I'm glad to hear that's what you use because that's what I would definitely do too. But, um, you know, I would think probably if people are complacent and they want, but they, but this is somebody that wants to be better Then I think you're coming from a place of love anyway. So going to do it first off is the thing you should do. Second off, um, you know, probably starting with some positive things, honestly, I think, I think a lot of times it comes down to if you're giving somebody advice or telling them about this stuff and it's really not, not warranted, like not wanted. I'm sure it's warranted, not wanted maybe because they're complacent. Maybe people like being complacent, but, even if they say they want to get better, it's often. Um, so starting kind of that, that you know, that crap sandwich kind of thing, that mentality that people would say if you're going to give somebody feedback. 
um, is something that I feel would work in this situation as well. Um, you know, maybe maybe you're killing the game at like you know whatever you're doing, and, and your family sees you, and you're like, oh man, you know, I wish I could be killing the game like you're killing the game. But you know, you know, yeah, I'll get there. You know, I, yeah, I'll probably start tomorrow. And then like weeks go by, and they're yeah, you know, I just can't really get to where you're getting it. Well, it's it's probably a good. Um, it's probably pretty easy to pick out something, you know, if they're your family member, that, something that they're probably doing well, or something that they, you know, say they're going to do that they do actually complete. And leaning on those things is probably to start. Like, um, you know, hey, you're you are a guy that keeps, um, you know, everybody uh, or, or a gal that keeps everybody happy. You're the light of the party kind of person. You know, you uh, bring out the best in people. Um, when you say you're going to come, you know, to my event or birthday party, whatever it's going to be, um, you, you always are there every time, and you know, like you, you bring so much bright, like light to the to the party, um, and and you should you should really take that and bring that light kind of to your own life sometimes, and you know, treat yourself the same way you treat me. Like if you tell me that you know you're going to be here at my party you know, and you're there, then that's great. You should tell you, when you tell yourself, you're going to, you know, meet yourself and, and get out there and do, you know, kill the game like I am or come do this workout with me or read this book or whatever it is, um, then treat yourself the same way you, you're treating others and, and do it because you're only hurting yourself by not doing it. Um, so that's probably the direction I would take. I think it would depend on every situation, on every relationship. It, it, there's a whole lot of depends out there. Um, that I'm not, you know, really alluding to that would that could change the situation in multiple different ways. But um, I think starting with that, you know, and then probably ending up with some more, you know, good stuff there at the end, uh, just to kind of pat them on the back a little bit, so they they kind of walk out the door feeling empowered rather than, you know, defensive because they got told something they're not good at and they need to be doing it. Yeah, I think mean, I think the you mentioned a subtle suggestion of like just doing something together, like let, read this book together or whatever. Like yeah. Even if that's the only way you approach it, that's probably the least, uh, like, I wouldn't get offended or defensive if, you, like, you might be playing mind games on someone, which is fine, <laughs> but if you're like, you know, I'm going to ask this, you know, whoever, if, uh, you know, they'll read a book with me, because yeah, that is a baby step just to getting better, right? So it's like... I think that's a really good start off point, and anyway. If and if they're just like, yeah, I mean, sure, I'll read a book, and then you're kind of holding them accountable, but not, like, in an asshole way... Right. Like, yeah, man, I just got through like chapter three last night. How far did you get? And like, oh, I haven't started. Be like, come on, man, I don't want to do this by myself. Like, I hate reading too. Or you know, you, there's just like so many different little mind games you could play. So I'm essentially saying you should deceive your friends and family. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm kidding, but uh, no, I think you bring up a really good point. I think even in that specific example, it's something you can almost. I mean, unless someone just absolutely hate, like, oh, I'll never read. You know, someone like that you're dealing with. Maybe you, you can always find that person out. Then I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, maybe, but you can, yeah, reading, reading is good for everybody who would think like that, but, um, you can always find a book on something that, you know, that can help improve you or something that's really going to help some, I mean, that we, Jared tries to bring something every week. And so, uh, there's plenty of examples out there. And if it's not something to do with physical fitness or mental toughness or becoming better, if it's something about maybe learning about engineering or some job people want to do or anything, you know, art, whatever, anything, there's a book out there that you could probably do together. So I think that's, that's a pretty good, you know, look at you come up with a good practical example. That's what I do. <laughs> but I, you know, in thinking about it just a little bit more, I would just make sure that's not something that you are good at. Like you're a really good artist. And if you were like, hey, man, let's draw together. I'd be like, like, no. Why? Like, because you're already like, I would know that you're like, I don't know. It's like, dude, it, it would be better if we were trying to learn something together. You know? Yeah, would, but I can get better still, right? So... Yeah, you have a pretty good mindset. I'm saying like if you were <laughs> like if if I was trying to like bring someone over to to work out, it would be, you know, like maybe not as appealing because they you're not starting at the same spot. You know, it, I think you make a good point. It, it would always come off as this like I'm trying to teach you something when that's not the relationship you necessarily want. You know, if if I'm like, well, you're doing sure. that, that barbell movement incorrectly. And if you did that in art, if you're like. Yeah, you know that's good, but like, I have no idea how to teach them. <laughs> like, your shading sucks or whatever. You know, it's like I'm learning from you. We're not doing it together. You know, um, right? Which it's always that's good to learn from someone, but I think that someone who wants to learn from someone else is already already has the the better human mindset, if you will. 
Yeah, I mean, I see what you're saying. I, I, I would agree with you. It's probably it's a whole different um, dynamic. But I, I would also kind of disagree and say that I think it, it could work out great in that situation because I think sometimes people can be inspired by seeing maybe not the end results, but seeing the direction that they, you know, where they could get to if they keep following that direction. Yeah, if they just shortcut success by listening to people who've already done, done it. Yeah. I, I want to say one more thing on inspiration, if you don't mind. Some other kind of another way, other than the way I kind of talked about already. Go for it, man. Cool. So one uh, one other kind of way that I, I used a lot in counseling um, some of my clients was to show them results, and even if it's like. You know, we're talking about somebody that, you know, they're so complacent, they don't have any results. Like, they're, they're not doing anything right now. Like, maybe they're, they're, out, of, they're out of work. They don't have, they're, maybe they're on the streets. This is, some, this is somebody that's really not doing well in life. But somehow they have, you know, they're, maybe they're listening to the podcast, right? <laughs> I don't know. But um, there's, there are ways, you know, to find, look back at past successes, you know, to look at, some things that they are doing right. As I used the example earlier of like, you know, this guy brings light, you know, to the party or gal or whatever because of maybe their personality or the way they treat people. And, and those are things that even you can bring as accomplishments. So, you know, showing, showing people that they can achieve something, showing them that, that success can happen, help inspire them as well. It's almost like just building confidence. So, you know, it, it can be as small as, you know, high school was hard on some people and, and talking to them about, you know, that experience and then that they were able to make it through and graduate and survive, you know, can seem like really something small to a lot of us. But to others who haven't accomplished as much, if you can find nothing else, there are examples like that to show them that, look, you know, if you stick with it, if you have confidence in yourself, you know, look, you, you can accomplish things. Here's an example. So sometimes just just showing the fact, just showing them the simple fact that look, you've accomplished things before, you can do it again can help inspire others. I think that's great, man. I think you know I I brought up a similar point in uh, discipline. The last question episode is like the the double edged sword of discipline is like the more discipline you have, you'll start to see more success. But the only unfortunate thing is you have to be disciplined to to see that success. Uh, you know, but but yeah, you like the but once you see the success or know that it's possible, you'll be more inclined to keep going that direction or down that path. Right. Cool guys. Well, I think that uh, that clears this one up and ends this episode. If you have any questions, uh, shoot us an email or uh, reach out to us on Twitter. But other than that, thanks for listening. Yeah. Happy Halloween. Best. Losers always whine about their best.